So my name is John B. So I'm the uh, senior advisor to the Clinton government, which is an Aboriginal government in the Northwest Territories. One of the things that we're doing is we need to know a lot more about ourselves because the modern way of doing business is really a corporate model. But that corporate model is, is for the exchange of uh, finances and exchange of thought without having to give up and erode any rights that, you, that, that you've always had. So the traditional model, knowledge of governance is still there, which is land-based. And uh, to teach about our own systems, we need to start right from the beginning. And that means uh, working with uh, uh, like schools, working with a community to do on the land programs to get uh, young people to step out into the landscape for the first time and get used to it. And to do harvesting and the method of harvesting and processing and the stories that go with it. And, and so you can start off very early, especially uh, uh, if the schools are doing it all the better. And then you have your community activity, which would happen in the summer where you have on the land programs again. And at the same time, you have all these uh, games and activities, uh, celebrations in the communities that need to be enhanced all the time. And, uh, and then the larger ones is our annual canoe trips, annual uh, hunting trips, where you encourage people to go back on the land and learn as much as they can from the landscape. And, uh, and the, <clears throat> And then there's a bigger picture now that if you have a claim, you, we need to start teaching our community members and our workforce uh, to talk about the history, of our own history and how we got into a settlement of, of our land claims and, and what we end up with, jurisdiction, and how do we work with other governments without compromising further what we had before? So those are done through clinical uh, uh, agreement courses, as well as uh, uh, staff training and uh, their participation in collecting information, the digital archives. Uh, they, they manage all the websites uh, and all the Facebook pages and newsletters that are developed. We have genealogy. We have uh, uh, our membership records. Um, so uh, it's constant. And all, all of these are new. They're not recognized anywhere, el anywhere else except internal. And uh, there's lots of other uh, First Nations across Canada that do similar things, but now it, it's time to share how we do things so that we don't have to spend too much time developing um, ourselves when there's models out there that might work. And they might not be uniform all the same, but there's some elements that are common. And the common things are land-based activity and land-based training and uh, land-based knowledge transfer and uh, building characters uh, so that when we're, when we're moving forward, we're doing it uh, you know, with uh, some form of uh, protection from further erosion. Well, in a, in a, in a day, uh, a, lot, a lot of the, the uh, things that we do is exactly what we're doing here, is that sometimes it's a one-on-one, -on -one and sometimes it's a, a group activity, and sometimes it means uh, networking with other organizations to see, not only in the territories, but across Canada, and even international, to find out what's the latest trend, what's the best way of, uh, of uh, maybe streamlining or how to make it more effective. That there are uh, other people working 
in this area that we need to know about so that, that we're not spending too much time uh, creating something that might already exist out there already. Well, the successful of the programs is that uh, if somebody starts uh, uh, speaking more than English and is able to read in their own language and even speak uh, some words in their language and then you see that they're having bush skills, they're, they're, they know more about their genealogy and their family tree and, uh, and even their traditional names, that's how you measure it is that you see some evidence of what was there before that has kind of been under um, erosion for such a long time. Indigenous education is uh, just get to know your own history. Uh, if, you, if you have that interest in getting to know yourself and where you came from, that's the beginning. And uh, once you get on that trail, then the rest will follow. Well, a lot of these uh, original information and laws of the land was always expressed in the language itself and can never really be fully translated into English because there's no terms for it. And so we need to, look, to know our, about our own uh, heritage, uh, the way we do things and how decisions are made. Uh, the best way to retain that information is, is to uh, learn or make an effort to learn that language. The most important uh, uh, part is the, uh, the storytelling because that was uh, one of the ways of, of knowledge translation without uh, it, it's all based on, on activity and real life, but the uh, telling of the stories and the, that uh, it's just people communicating, communicating a lot more um, in the old way is probably the most important part. The history of average indigenous people in, in, in Canada has to make it into mainstream curriculum. That's, that's, uh, that's a, a, another important door for other people to know about the history uh, that is over 10,000 years old and even older. And all we're being taught is what happened in the last 150 years. So. Canada is losing a lot by not accepting uh, um, Indigenous studies. Well, one of them is, um, is uh, uh, recognition or changes to regulations or laws to allow for, uh, uh, for the history of First Peoples to be in the curriculum from uh, pre preschool all the way to uh, your doctorates, you know, all the way.